Recently, there's been some concerns revolving around the safety of realty income and their dividend over issues that some of their tenants are facing. Over the past couple months, a number of Realty Income's largest tenants have been announcing their intention to close a sizable number of their retail locations. On June 27th, it was announced that Walgreens was planning on closing up to 25% of their retail stores. On March 14th, Dollar General announced that they were also planning on closing 800 of their locations by the end of the year. To a smaller extent, CVS also said that they intend to close 300 of their locations, and 7-Eleven also said that they intend to close roughly 250 convenience stores within the near future. All four of these companies are some of the largest tenants that make up Realty Income's property portfolio. If we pull up Realty Income's latest investor presentation, we can see that both Dollar General and Walgreens represent 3.4% of their portfolio. 7-Eleven makes up 2.6% of their portfolio, and CVS makes up 1.3% as of Q1. This means that roughly 10.7% of their portfolio is made up of companies announcing widespread closures. With this kind of news, some people have been really concerned about whether Realty Income is currently facing any headwinds and if their dividend is going to be safe. So in this video, we'll do some research and make some calculations and determine if Realty Income might be in any kind of trouble going into the future. We'll first start by pulling up Realty Income's latest 10Q. Every quarter, every publicly listed company publishes this document, and it includes information on how well they've been performing. But it also has a breakdown of all the properties in their portfolio, which is what we're going to take a look at. We'll be able to see just how many properties this REIT owns that belongs to Walgreens, CVS, Dollar General, and every other tenant they have. Their last 10Q was published on May 7th, so almost two months ago at this point. Under Client Diversification, we can see that Realty Income has leases with $1,760 general locations. They also have 403 Walgreens, 634 7-Elevens, and 216 CVS leases. Walgreens is currently going through the most dramatic number of store closures, so we'll start with them. The company announced their plan to close 25% of their locations by the year 2027. And right away, that's one thing that's really going to benefit Realty Income, which is that these closures are going to happen over the course of three years. It's not going to be all of a sudden. But according to their 10Q, this company owns 403 buildings that are occupied by Walgreens. So if they're planning on closing 25% of their locations, we'll assume they'll exit 101 properties owned by Realty Income. However, I do have doubts that that'll actually happen, because this company has a rigorous process when it comes to acquiring new properties to add to their portfolio. They look at a lot of data and financial statements when determining if they're going to make a bid on a property. If they're interested in something, there isn't a great chance that they'll actually make an offer on it unless it meets all of their requirements. They do this to ensure the business occupying the building is set up for long-term success. Realty Income looks at the competitive landscape, store level performance, nearby traffic, current rent related to the market, and a whole host of other data. So even though Walgreens is closing 25% of their locations, they're only going to close their underperforming stores. If it was clear a Walgreens wasn't performing very well, then Realty Income wouldn't even bother trying to acquire the property. So I doubt we'll actually see Realty Income lose 25% of their Walgreens, but we'll go ahead and assume that that is the case. We'll assume that 101 Walgreens locations will be cleared out and the buildings will remain unoccupied. As of first quarter of this year, Realty Income had 15,485 properties in their portfolio. 101 properties out of 15,485 is only 0.6% of their properties. That's not going to have a significant impact on their financials or their monthly dividend. And even though Realty might lose their leases with Walgreens, they'll simply try to find a different tenant for the building. It shouldn't be too difficult if they are in good locations, which is what Realty aims for. Alternatively, they could also sell the property and use the proceeds to acquire something else. Let's look at Dollar General now. They announced that they'd be closing about 800 of their locations, which sounds like a lot, but Dollar General is one of the largest discount chains in the US. In total, they have over 20,000 retail locations. This means the company is closing just 4% of all their locations. Granted, Realty Income does hold a lot more Dollar Generals than Walgreens, about 1,300 additional stores. So let's run the same numbers like we did earlier. Assuming a scenario where Realty Income loses 4% of their 1,760 leases with Dollar General, that comes out to just 71 properties. Again, I don't think Realty Income would lose a full 4% because they aim to acquire better performing properties. 71 out of 15,485 properties is just 0.4% of their portfolio. That's quite a bit less of an impact compared to Walgreens. With CVS, they announced they'd be closing about 300 of their locations. 
According to the website Has Data, this company has roughly 9,160 locations as of May of this year. 300 properties means they'd be losing roughly 3% of all of their locations. Right now, Realty Income owns 216 CVS stores. 3% of 216 is only 7 properties. The impact this could have on Realty Income and their dividend is extremely small in this situation. And with 7-Eleven, it's an even smaller impact that I don't think is worth going into. Let's take a look at Realty Income's current payout ratio. As of their most recent quarter, the company reported FFO per share of $1.05. This company currently pays $0.26.3 cents per month in dividends. Multiply it by 3 and that comes out to $0.78.9 cents per quarter. So $0.78.9 divided by $1.05 comes out to a dividend payout ratio of 75.1%. This is very comfortable for a REIT and by no means indicates that Realty Income is anywhere close to being stressed with their dividend. Additionally, as of last quarter, Realty Income had an occupancy rating of 98.6%. This is higher than the REIT average, which according to NARREIT in Q1 of this year was 96.1%. In addition to all of that, Realty Income has also been really aggressive at growing their dividend this year in particular. Normally this company grows their dividend every quarter, and this REIT has been criticized for not growing it as aggressively as they have in years past. But Realty Income has already increased their dividend three times this year already, which puts them ahead of their normal schedule. Plus they've already grown it more in the last seven months than what they normally grow in a whole year. This company wouldn't be doing this if they thought they saw serious trouble coming for them. They've been moving away from the recession-vulnerable properties like theaters and gyms, which has been helpful. Some people have been concerned about the possibility of a recession occurring. History has shown that recessions are at a greater risk of happening when interest rates get cut. Fortunately, Realty Income has been publicly traded through three recessions. One of those was the worst this country's seen since the Great Depression. And fortunately, they've never gone through a dividend cut. In the end, when it comes to evaluating the risk this company is going through, we can only go off the evidence before us. The number of stores that are being closed by their top tenants isn't going to leave as big of an impact on the company as it might appear once you do the math. Their occupancy rating remains very high and their payout ratio is still very comfortable at this point. And again, Walgreens and all these other companies are only going to close their worst performing stores. Realty income shouldn't be holding too many of these if they've been sticking with their principles. In Q1 of this year, after analyzing over $9 billion worth of properties, they only made investments in about 6.6% of the total value they looked at. I continue to be really confident in this company, and they're still on track to do very well when interest rates do get cut. But with that being said, that's going to conclude today's video. If you'd like to connect and also see what's inside my own personal dividend portfolio, then feel free to check me out over on our Patreon, where you'll receive updates and be able to talk to me and other higher-yielding dividend and income investors. But with that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video, and until next time, take care.